Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for tuning in today for our masterclass with Team Create. Um, I thought I would give you some background to why we're here today and, and to introduce the masterclass itself. So my name is Gabby. Uh, I work at Manchester International Festival, uh, which is an arts festival in the UK that supports some of the greatest artists in the world to develop new projects and experiences. And, and we work on everything from visual arts to theatre, um, but over the past couple of years, um, this has involved actually supporting the development of video games. And that's included working with creators like Nina Freeman and Floma Dawkins. But today we're going to find out about the tools uh, that we use to create our most recent game. Um, and so before we launch into that, I thought it would be useful to also give you um, some more information on what that game is. So um, the artist behind that is uh, an artist called uh, Laturbo Avedon. Um, they're a virtual artist. And uh, we asked them to, to develop an online project for us. And, and, and if, you don't know any of the, if you don't know their work, they've been really excited about multiplayer games and has been developing artworks in multiplayer games for, for, for many years. And they were super excited about Fortnite Creative and the potential of using Fortnite Creative to make an exhibition and an installation. So we had this idea about relocating the factory and the factory is going to be the future home um, of the festival of MIF, and it's currently under construction. And what we've done is we've relocated the factory into Fortnite Creative onto our own island. And in that island, we've developed a quite, a, actually quite a difficult game and, and an installation as well, where you can look at art exhibitions and and, and dance and do loads of stuff. Um, for more information on that project, actually, the turbo is in the chat, so. Um, do feel free to ask questions, particularly um, yeah, on Twitch. Um, hi, Laturbo. Um, but it was because of Laturbo's project we started working with um, Team Create, um, and they really helped us build the factory in Fortnite Creative. Um, they're like virtual architects. They just build these brilliant virtual worlds, and we couldn't have done it without them. So I'm super excited to welcome Wirt Andrew from Team Create, who is going to give us some tips on game design. Um, and give you the option to build your own worlds. Um, he's actually created a number of projects that have been featured in Fortnite Creative already, so you're probably already aware of him. Um, he forms part of Team Create, but he is his own solo artist. And a lot of that work is, is available in the Creative Mode Hub right now. Um, even more excitingly, we also are going to welcome Mustard Plays, who's going to be chatting with Wert Andrew, and you might recognize him from YouTube. Um, he has this yeah, expert knowledge on all aspects of Fortnite creative, from tutorials to playthroughs. So, uh, yeah, super excited to, to, to hear about what they've got to say. Um, before I hand over to both of them and actually uh, allow you to play and build, um, I just want to say if you're really excited about this, uh, then do tune into an event we've got in, in October, which is going to be looking at world building in more depth. And, um, and actually look at world building in relation to storytelling. So um, without further ado, enjoy the masterclass and uh, welcome Wirt Andrew and Mustard Plays. Hey guys, uh, it's really exciting to be here with you. I'm Mustard Plays, if you don't know who I am. I've uh, been doing this for a long time and I'm really excited to be here with Wirt Andrew. Guys, if you... <laughs> Oh, there he is there. He is. Hey, oh. <laughs> if you guys don't know much about Fortnite Creative, which I'm assuming you probably don't, um, I've played a ton of different maps in Fortnite Creative. So Fortnite Creative's uh, all of the maps and games in it are built by other people, by non-developers like me or Word or or anyone. There's there's thousands of and thousands of maps that are made every day, and Word, in my opinion, is like the top. So I've played uh, almost all of his maps, and he's he's great. So we're you guys, this is a real treat to talk with him because he's like, when when they say this is a master class, this is, he's a master. So uh, we're excited to talk with him. Uh, so we're this uh, maybe introduce yourself a little bit, talk about uh, you know why why Fortnite Creative, uh, you know why uh, how how did you get into it, and then also about your team, Team Create, what that is. Etc. Hello. Well, hi. Um, you guys probably know me from my channel, but yeah, I'm Wart Andrew. I'm from Greece. I build stuff all day and all night, and maybe even more sometimes. But yeah, um, we we collaborated with uh, 
the Turbo Abidjan, as uh, uh, previously mentioned, and uh, we made the, the virtual factory. And uh, yeah, it was a very exciting project. Uh, it was it was insane to just build something out of um, reality or like from sketches and then turn it into something that uh, people recognized. And uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm excited to be here and uh, cool. Like, let's get this started. I guess <laughs> I'm excited. Oh, oh. So okay, so why why do you why what made you decide to start building? and creating uh, games and things in Fortnite creative versus, I don't know, something else like Minecraft or Roblox. There's there's so many other games out there where you can make stuff. Why why Fortnite? Uh, for, isn't Fortnite just Battle Royale? <laughs> well, uh, Fortnite has this uh, distinct art style that I enjoy a lot. Um, it has this sort of um, mixture between being wacky and being very serious. And uh, I kind of like that because I can use it in both ways. I can make something cartoony and when I'm in the serious mood, I can make like a very serious story and it will still work. So I like that fact. And I also um, adore, because it looks exactly like Time Splitters 2, which is my favorite game of all time. And uh, if that game was made in the future, that it would definitely look like Fortnite. So I'm like in love with the whole art style. And that's what uh, drives me every day. It's just uh, log in, just what's this amazing art style. and like try to see how I can um, build some different areas and worlds and stories and just keep on doing that, I guess. So so what do you use for inspiration when you're making a new map? Like I, like I know this, uh, the factory you did, that was pretty simple because you just either like recreate this here, but like when you're, when you're creating something that's totally new, just out of your head, well, what are you using for inspiration? Like, how do you how do you come up with ideas? Um, well, I tend to consume a lot of media. So I play a lot of games. I watch a lot of anime. I watch movies. I go to the movies. Um, so I tend to consume a lot of media. And uh, when I'm not feeling like building, I will just, just do something else without even thinking about it. And once I get that spark that I want to, like, oh, you know what? I like this. Let's, like, rebuild it. Or, like, let's jam in creative. And I'll just head back in and just keep on going. I love that. So so uh, what are some of your favorite things, to, like your favorite animes or artists out there like that you like to go to for maybe consistent inspiration? Um, I don't know. I, I tend to change from time to time. Like I used to love steampunk. Then I switched to cyberpunk. And now I switch to, I don't know how this style is called, but it's more of a, like a dark machine art. So it's, it's like, it depends the time. Like, I don't like doing the same thing over and over. I just like to keep it fresh and keep it going with different themes and artists. So I can't say I have like a specific artist that I have in mind. It's just, uh, it changes from sure. time to time. It's, 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 it's what you're interested in at, the, at that time. Interesting. Yeah. So, so what would you say if someone that's looking at this stream today that watches you build, what, how, what would you say to them? How do you get started in building and how, like, what advice would you give a new builder or a new artist that's coming in and wants to build something in Fortnite creative? Well, it's not about a building in Fortnite specifically. It's about building in general. Like, uh, are you that sort of person that wants to play music and uh, just wants to start jamming or something? Or like, are you that person that wants to draw in, a, in like an empty paper? Like it's, you see like a blank paper and you want to draw in it. And it's just uh, use your creative power and creative juices to produce something. That's where it all starts. Like it, it's not about Fortnite creative specifically, it's just uh, what it aligns with your um, interests. And then finding the right tools to express that interest. Yeah, that's great. Uh, so, okay, spot talking about Fortnite or, or maybe just cre creation in general, what is the biggest challenge you personally, you know, see and like, how have you overcome that? Well, um... I think the biggest challenge is always yourself because that's the only person who's going to tell you like, oh, I'm bored or I cannot do this or I have this other anxiety in my mind and just cannot focus. So like a, 
the whole point is to find a balance with yourself, get a lifestyle that allows you to have this moment in time that you can create. And that's like the starting point. And from that point, once you get the real life sorted out and you can have some sort of moment of peace that you can build something, then you like um, just jam, basically just build. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to think of an end goal to start jamming and see where it gets you. And the, the moment, the, the thing you love the most, that's the one you should like keep on going and keep on recreating, keep on building. Do you, so do you have many maps or uh, creations that you started and you haven't finished yet? Yeah, I have like uh, 20 maps. Uh, I think last time I, I like counted, I have like 20 unfinished maps that I haven't completed. But are, are there, so are there some that are like months and months old or is it just stuff that you've recently worked on? Well, it's uh, it's everything. Like since yeah. I started, I have like 20 projects that I haven't completed. And once wow. the ones I was, because I found something even more interesting that was uh, taking all my time. And the other one was like, okay, I don't know where I'm getting with this. So I'm just going to start something new. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love that. So it's some, sometimes it's good to take a break from whatever you're working on so that you can get inspiration and, and then maybe you'll, you'll come back to that with a renewed vigor. That's great. Um, okay, so what do you prefer? Do you prefer to create your own worlds or recreate stuff from the real world? Like what's what's your pre preferred thing to build um, just in creative mode? Well, I like to build stuff uh, of my own uh, and not copy others. Or like I'm trying to get as much further away as everything else and i'm trying to create my own style my own stories like everything on my own because uh, not only i feel uh, proud of what i have accomplished that is my work and not someone else's but it also makes me a better creator having to go that extra mile and do something that i don't have a reference to yeah yeah okay that's awesome all right so tell us a little bit what are you doing today what is this a uh, tutorial that you're going to give us today. Just give a little rundown of what people can expect to see. All right, cool. Yeah, so basically I'm going to do like a little um, tutorial on how you can build something if you've never built anything for the creative. Like it's if it's your first time in the creative, like how uh, the menus and how the tools work. So very basic stuff. I may be a little bit fast with things, but um, that's because it's hard for me to be slow after all this time. So I'm going to try to be as slow as possible. For sure, for sure. Okay, well, I'm excited to watch. Uh, guys, Wirt is a master. Uh, you can't learn from anyone better. Uh, so so pay attention. Um, I'll leave, I'm going to take off right now, guys, and I'm going to let Wirt take it from here. And uh, he's, he's great. You're in good hands. Um, so I'm going to sign off and say, have fun. <laughs> and good luck, Wirt. Awesome. Thanks for uh, being here and uh, yeah. see you around. Okay. See you, dude. All right. Cool. Okay. Let's uh, switch now. All right. So, I think everybody can see. Cool. Cool. All right. So, this is uh, Fortnite, essentially. Um, as you can see here, these are all the modes of Fortnite. It's not only creative, but uh, today we're focusing on creative. So first of all, you need to switch to creative mode before you start uh, building or doing anything. And then uh, you hit play. Now you're going to see a menu here. It says uh, select the server. This is because Fortnite is uh, online. So you need to create a server first before you start doing anything. You're going to see your ready symbol here. And uh, after a few seconds, you're going to load in. All right, so first I'm going to show you the end result. Like this is um, something that you can do if you really put a lot of time into creative. So you can design like art styles that maybe don't even exist yet, or like you can design your own. But this is like an example of how you can take it to the next level. And this is like something you would build after you've uh, dedicated a lot of time into an art style and, to, and into the tools. So first of all, uh, you see this little yellow rift? 
at your own risk. Um, this area here uh, that I just loaded in, it's called the hub. So the hub is a place where you can see creations from other players like here. And you can also see uh, an island that is your own. So here you can build your own uh, world. So you can either enter or you can go into this console and uh, interact with it. So you're going to see this little menu that uh, keeps track of all your islands you previously created. So for this uh, tutorial, I'm just going to create a new one. And um, we're going to be presented with a list of islands that we want to start with. Um, <clears throat> so it's uh, um, a good tip for beginners is um, start with an island that has uh, terrain. Because um, terrain will help you uh, have like a base in your island, like something you can uh, not have to worry about the terrain, and um, it's easier that way. If you're thinking you can handle a little bit more complexity, then I would recommend the Grid Island, which is basically just a flat island that has nothing. And the, the Grid Island is useful when, because you can build something that stretches huge in every single direction, and you don't have to worry about cliffs getting into your way, in your way, like here. But for the for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to go with the first island, the tempered island. So after you select an island, you're going to wait a little bit because it's generating the island. <clears throat> and once that happens, you're going to see this little animation saying, this is ready. So now you can walk in. And you're going to travel into that island that you just created. So this is essentially how you build. This is the area that we're going to build stuff. There's um, uh, various controls, but I'm not going to explain all the movement controls in Fortnite. It's just uh, because they're uh, different based on your platform. So even if I do explain things about PC, uh, going in console, they will be totally different. So that's the only part that you have to uh, see on your own if you're uh, following this tutorial. First of all, you can go um, you can go up, you can go down, you can move like a character. And uh, there is this uh, uh, device, let's say, or like a tool that's called the phone. So normally in Fortnite, you have a pickaxe, and you can pickaxe things, you can break things. And uh, that's basically the core mechanics of Fortnite. You can also build. But that, that building is for um, the Battle Royale side of Fortnite and the Save the World side. So for us, uh, building is different because we use a phone, which is this tool here. And the phone is totally different because it doesn't build like the normal building in Fortnite. It uses uh, existing pieces. And it takes every single piece that exists, not only the player-made ones that you can get by building in the other modes. So this uh, this uh, tool, let's say, it's going to keep calling it a phone from now on, it has two modes. There's either uh, like a free mode that has no grid. You can place things, you can rotate things. And there's also a grid mode, which uh, is a uh, Multiple grids, as you can see on the left side, it says grid snap 32. There's like multiple grids you can un align the prop. And this is for um, what we call props. Props are basically objects. And uh, there's also construction, which construction has a slightly bit different rule set than props. So construction always abides to a grid. As you can see, if I'm building, Regardless of, there is no grid for me now, so I can only build in specific, um, like counting everything to be a uh, grid two, essentially. There is, uh, however, functionality that let me use uh, building uh, and construction as a prop. I, mean, I can rotate if I want, but that's a little bit more advanced. We're going to focus on the basic stuff here. So, um, OK, so as you can see, I'm using props from the island, but I don't have to do that. So let's, hold, let's just delete all that so we have some free space. 
Um, what I'm doing right now is called Turbo Delete, and it can be enabled in options. Normally, if you hold Delete, it's going to do it a little bit slower. But with Turbo Delete, you can just simply hold Delete and hover over things to delete them fast. Anyway, so the core of Creative is uh, the content browser. If I press Tab, Tab is on uh, PC, but uh, search the button that is on your platform. You're going to see this menu here. And this menu has uh, the play, which is what players see in Battle Royale and Save the World. It has my island, which is all the settings in the island right now, the one I'm building. And it also has this tab called Creative, which has all the props in the game, all the devices, all the weapons, everything you, there is in the game, it's in this menu. So um, let's, let's just um, go, uh, I don't know, search a house. Let's say it's gonna. There's multiple ways of uh, bringing things into the map. I'm just gonna show you the first one. So the first one is by bringing a prefab in. A prefab is basically Epic has uh, taken specific props and specific construction materials, and they have put them together to create a little example of what you can build with specific art styles. So for example, if I want to do like a pirate uh, town. I would go to, wait, I forgot the name. <laughs> oh, Lazy Lagoon. Yeah, so Lazy Lagoon is the pirate stuff. So say if I want to do like a pirate house instead, then I would just find the one I want and then place it where I want. And with this, we have all the props that we need. So you can see everything is selectable. Everything can be, oh, I have the grid still on. Everything can be modified, rotated. And uh, also, I forgot to mention, you can also scale things if you want. There's a minimum and maximum because uh, textures will be uh, very weird if you like scale up too high. But uh, another good thing is that you can scale in specific directions, which is extremely useful when microscoping different things. Let's say I want to do like a little, I don't know, like object. It only requires one side of a prop to sew then I can use uh, different scaling on different sides to create something that is uh, something that I need. It's not going to be, um, you're not going to know until you need it, essentially. Anyway. back to the basic mode. So say I wanted to continue building on something. I can simply go in and just uh, keep on going. And um, one thing I mentioned to, Monst to Mustard was uh, keep jamming. Like jamming is uh, so important when you're building things. So I'm going a little bit fast, by the way. I'm just trying to show you how it looks once you get used to the controls. So I'm doing this on purpose. Too, so. But I did a mistake here. I want to build this real house. Then actually, can I use the floor in here? Oh, it's the same floor. It's going to grab this. Make a little room here. Not the roof, though. There we go. There we go. Oh, it's the same one. What do they use for a ceiling? They don't use a ceiling. See, like I'm watching what they're doing. I'm trying to copy their art style. Just, uh, going along with what they're doing. And this is a very useful technique because you learn. Because um, the people who made these prefabs are professional level designers. They know how things work. And they also have professional artists and modular artists that create these art styles and these pieces to perfectly fit each other. So you don't have to worry about uh, creating scenes or like little things that, little edges, you know? Like if you don't place them correctly, yeah, you're gonna create scenes. This is why you have to be observant of this style. And maybe here I'm like not supposed to have like a little extra area. So I can just go and I don't know, place a little roof here and make it like this. Now, as you can see, it counts perfectly. And here you might need like a little, uh, I don't know, base. All right, cool. So say say that I have like a little area. Now I want to make it interactable. I want to make the player go here and see everything I'm making. So this is where devices come in hand. So devices is the logic of 
uh, creative. There's a, there's a ton of things, and every single device has its own settings that you can customize. Let's go with uh, very simple stuff. Very, first of all, I need to spawn the player. So I just need a player spawn. I um, enable the traps because this is uh, essentially a trap. So it will show in my traps. Uh, for people that don't know Fortnite, uh, Fortnite uh, has uh, building materials, which as you can see now on the lower right, I have a wall, I have a floor, I have a staircase, and there's also this roof piece and they can also be customized and that's for the player side of fortnite now for the creative side they use that um they use that uh core mechanic but in f5 there is traps in fortnite so in save the world for example you use traps to trap uh, creatures and uh create little I don't know, contraptions for like spikes or electrical uh traps and gas and poison is uh, a ton of them. I really love Save the World, by the way. Anyway, so they use that slot for us to use our devices. So that's how we place devices. So you have to switch to your trap and then place the device. Anyway, so I place the device. You can always customize this device to any setting you want. Uh, bear in mind that the basic options always so first, unless you switch to the advanced options, which is this button here. And then every device is going to switch to the to this tab. This, uh, there's also other tabs for ease of use. This is uh, anything you modified in the device is going to show up here. Anything uh, channel related, which I'm going to talk in a bit, is going to show here. And you can also search options. So since I brought up channels, uh, let me show you what channels are. So OK, say we spawn the player, right? We want to like make a, I don't know, like a basic uh, locked door key situation. So I'm just going to I'm just gonna find the specific prop that I want. And I'm going to show you a different aspect of creative. But OK, you see the galleries? These are uh, just like prefabs, but uh, everything is placed next to each other. Not only that, I can spawn it. I can spawn the entire thing if I want. But uh, I can also go inside the gallery and find a specific prop that I want. And this is also the same for prefabs. If I want to grab that little rope from the pirate ship, I click on it, and then I find the rope. Which is this one, for example. All right, so I need a table. So I'm going to search on residential gallery. And I'm going to go here, and I'm going to grab a table. Let's say this one. We grab it, we place it on a quick bar, and then I press that quick bar, and I spawn that table. All right, so say we want to place a key here, and we want to uh, lock this door. The player cannot unlock it until they get the key. So, so the way to do that, because um, there's some props that Fortnite doesn't have, which is fine. And uh, there are ways to circumvent that. So um, I'm setting uh, what is called a little sign, a billboard. So in billboards, you can write anything you want. So in this case, I'm going to go to Google, and I'm going to say key remote. I'm going to grab the icon. By the way, if your platform doesn't support this, you can always uh, DM a friend and he can like do this for you if he's on PC. And uh, so basically, I place, uh, you have to switch the bar band, by the way, to spawn to do that. I know I'm a little bit uh, going through stuff uh, fast, but I'm just trying to show like um, what you can do with it and uh, just try to fit as much stuff as possible into the time frame that I have. Uh, all right, so it's going to switch advanced settings. I'm going to disable the border because we don't want that. I'm going to go to background color, be clear. And uh, as you can see, I have a key. It is like a little key that I have. So I can use the grid, I can rotate it. And actually, you see, now it's, it's not aligned perfectly. So it's like a little. Um, trick I can do. I can hold tab, and that will uh, align the prop to the grid again. And sometimes if you are off the grid and you like rotate weirdly and you want to realign to the grid, that's how you do it. Anyway, so I'm going to place this here. Now I'm going to go off grid to find places. This. And then I'm going to add the button. Buttons are what player can interact. So I'm just going to add the button. 
and I'm gonna say we can trigger only once because we only want the player to get the key once. Um, we can set the interaction to get key. Visible during game. We don't want the button to be visible. We just want to create a little interaction radius for the player to um, see, like, player to interact with this little radius. We don't want the actual button. To, so I'm just going to place it here. And um, before I connect everything, we just need one more device, which is called the lock device. It's this one. So the lock device goes into every single door in Fortnite. As you can see, it's red, but if I get it close to the door, it becomes blue. So you place the lock device, and then you can fly and customize it if you get close, like this. So initial door position is going to be closed. Uh, it's going to start locked. Uh, we don't want this device to be visible in game. So there we go. We have everything set up. So the last thing we need to do is uh, get the lock device to understand that the player got the key and unlock the door. So the way to do that, and uh, the way to connect anything in Fortnite created is through the tunnel system. So the tunnel system is in every single device. If you just scroll down in advanced settings, you're going to always see the tunnels and specific things happening with tunnels. So we want to, when the player interacts, to send um, a signal on tunnel one. And after we do that, we also want the key to disappear. So I'm going to go to the billboard. And I'm going to say set text hidden when tunnel one uh, signal is sent. And then I'm going to also go to the door. And I'm going to say open. Oh, actually, we don't want it open. We just want it unlocked. So I'm just going to say unlock when receiving from tunnel one. That's basically it. And now if I go into the post menu, I can see there is a button called start game. Let's see if I did everything correctly. All right, and then we are inside here, the area that we just created. Let's see. Let's see? At e. So once I press E, key disappears. Oh, we didn't test if the door was locked. Yeah, it's open now. Let's uh, uh, do, wait, let's restart the game. You can end the game from the red button in the post menu, by the way. And you can also restart the game by saying playing again. Let's just check if the door was locked initially. And yeah, it was locked. Actually, I can break it, but that's a setting you can change from my island um, menu. So I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna show you how to not, you can have everything not be breakable so that you don't want the player to cheat. So let's uh, let's uh, go into the settings a little bit. So game is all the basic settings that you need to uh, for winning conditions, uh, the very 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 basic stuff. And then settings is everything else, like little details. For example, say you want to change the time of day to be day. For example, see. You can do that if you want. You can change the camera filter to be like, I don't know, borderlands, or like a light color to be red. There are all things you can do. All right, so the main one we want to change is environmental damage. Make it off. And I think that's, that's about it. I tend to turn everything off just to be sure, but just, uh, that's the main one. All right, so now, we start the game, I think it will not break stuff. Let's see. Yeah, okay, cool. So now they cannot cheat. They can only access this door once they get the key from here. All right, cool. So let's just uh, build a little interior and then add a little coin for the player to win once they get inside. All right, so as I've said before, there's two ways of uh, building. There's one way of looking what others have made. This is, by the way, the multi-select button. You can multi-select stuff if you want. And building that way. Let's hit it here. 
There is also uh, the manual way of going to galleries and getting that perfect uh, object that you want. For example, I want uh, to go into pirate props and grab uh, something that is more pirate-related and then spawn it. So I need to remove that filter because it makes it hard to see. There we go. So depending what you want and depending how uh, much uh, inspiration you have that day, I suggest uh, trying both methods. All right, so we have like a little interior made. Let's just add a coin here, for example, that the player can get. So this is a different device. It's more of a, let me find it, there we go. It's called collectible gallery. This is actually a gallery, it's not a single one. As you can see, there are multiple ones. It's going to grab the coin, delete everything else. It's here. All right. And then uh, I'm going to create a little light to uh, indicate to the player where he has to go. It's light casting, by the way. I am sewing this. So, placement is not ideal right now, but I don't have too much time to do everything perfectly. But for example, here's a little light. And actually, the lights should be outside to indicate that this is where you have to go. And if the even if the light doesn't fit, you can always find one that fits. This is going to be the end. So basically, now we need to indicate that this is the end. So there's multiple ways of uh, making the end work, like uh, the winning condition. I'm just going to show you one of the uh, ways that is going to be the simplest for you. So first of all, uh, coins grant you score. So as a little precaution, you always need to go to game find the vehicle tricks score multiplier set that to zero and you might not understand what this means but once you have vehicles in your map then uh, this is gonna mix up with your score so only set that to zero if you're doing score and then we want to go to score to end and set that to one and that's about it all we have to do now is go to the coin oh it's already on score one so it should be ready and once we get the coin we win the game let's see All right, cool. As you can see, the door locks on its own because the lock device is doing it in case we left it open. And we grab the key, open the door. Let's see. Then the game. Simple as that. And the reason you can still see the coin when we picked it up is because it's a multiplayer game. And, and there is a setting on the coin to either be collected once a player gets it or uh, uh, be collectible for all teams. Team, collecting team, all, consume if collected. And these are all things you can customize and uh, depending on what you do. So this is like a really basic scenario of, um, of a single player map that you can do like a simple lock device and a coin. Now um, we have uh, of like a, uh, Five minutes, do we? And uh, we can probably make a little hot message saying, Congratulations, you did the game. So I'm going to do that real quick. All right. Oh, we have more time. We have 20 minutes. Cool. All right. So in order to um, get a message to the player, we can either use the billboard, which we used for the key, and have floating text, which is one way. But we can also have the HUD device message. The HUD device goes directly to the HUD of the player, which is what you see around, like a little text that is sticky on your screen. I'm just going to place one HUD device down. And I'm going to say, congratulations. You beat the game. I'm going to set the time from start to not be on because um, 
otherwise it's gonna start on its own. Display time doesn't matter because once we collect the coin and see the message in a, in a little bit, it's gonna end the game. But this one means after five seconds, the message is gonna go away on its own. Textile, we have like multiple choices. Let's do like a bold a little message priority. It's gonna create a little exclamation mark so you can um, take priority over other messages if you wanted to. You can have sounds, you can, there's a, there's a lot of settings. I'm not gonna go through all of them because it's, uh, it's quite a few. All right, so I'm gonna set a new channel now because that's how we can connect it to the coin. I'm gonna set it channel two. Uh, this device won't sell in game, so it's it's fine to leave, just leave it there. And then once collected, we're gonna say transmit on channel two. So that's about it. Let's see if it works. Now let's do a little other thing. Say you're making a big map and uh, you don't want the player to start at the beginning all the time. First of all, remove the time limit so the game doesn't end on its own after five minutes. And then I'm gonna go spawn location and go with current location. So now it's gonna spawn me here inside the room. You can even remove the countdown if you want. So once I collect, oh, because it ended the game, it didn't sell me the message. So that's fine. I'm not gonna show you how you can do it with a delay because that's a little bit more complicated. But um, let's do that with the door instead. I'm gonna say door unlocked. And all I have to do is set this to channel one. The same thing. Okay. See, now once I get it, it says door unlocked. All right. Now let's just, um, you know, like um, building in creative is not about like doing a fixed game or like doing something like specific. It's about jamming. And uh, just my advice would be release your creativity. Don't think about uh, rules. Don't think about uh, what you think is nice or not nice. Just do something that when you see it, you will adore it. And uh, there's multiple ways of going with it. But uh, the, the way I'm going to go now is that you can make something really fast with placeholder props. And then you can swap them with something really nice. So getting a sense of the land, getting a sense of your states can be uh, made super fast by using the player made materials instead. Say, so, okay, I want a state that will be this big. I want the player to maybe slide here. Let's go like uh, a little stealer and a bouncer. So, I don't know. Say, player is going to slide here. Once he gets here, he's going to bounce above the house. You can even test while in edit mode. You don't even have to be in play mode. Oh, I missed the bounce. <laughs> <coughs> and, like brainstorm straight from edit mode. And this is uh, one really good thing about creative because it lets you um, it lets you prototype things in mere seconds. Like you don't even have to worry about uh, creating a build or loading or rendering. It's just there. It's just you build it, it's there. If you don't want it, you just destroy it. And that's also there. <laughs> but yeah, like say say I want to turn this house into a parkour house. All I do is I go inside, I grab some walls, and I just make it like, I don't know, I shape it the way I want, essentially. And just, uh, I could probably, actually, I can even use the in-game ones or the house you can use the roofs here you can even use this floor and make i don't know like do a little light course i have to go through the house and here and then let's add the vehicle because why not vehicles are cool the other way So I have to grab the ice across without bumping into stuff and then reach the vehicle. And off we go. You can make a race course if you want. 
you can have some cool race cars and uh, you can have checkpoints you can have anything you want and it's just there and it just works the best part about it it's all free you don't have to pay a single thing for anything i'm gonna make a parkour course with a golf cart or i don't know you can make planes like this just so much stuff sometimes i wonder why i don't build more <laughs> all right and then like make See now, I want to make a plane course. I've never done that before. That would be cool. Like make little rings in the sky with fire, and you can pass inside and just do checkpoints. And like, yeah, just cross into the house and destroy it. Yeah, be careful because you can destroy stuff if you're cross with them. In it's like you can break them with your pickaxe. That's only in edit mode though. Not in game mode. If you set that setting that I saw you before. But yeah, it's um, it's crazy what you can do, and that's why I'm everybody's in love with it. Because, uh, um, for example, just last week, this is like what we got. Like this is all last week. I'm just gonna place everything down so you can see how much stuff was added, and they keep adding more. It's just uh, it's hard to even keep up with all the content at this point. Like, there are all tiles you can use as floors and as walls to build anything you want. And this is uh, like a, let me change the, the lighting because I can't see anything. It's going to restore defaults. It's for building flotilla islands, for example. This is the latest um, uh, season theme. They all work as well with the lock device that I just sold you. And uh, I'll show you the props as well. Like uh, the, the, the quality of the props, this is so good. That's why I love it. Like there's a, there's a side below. Uh, some UGC editors have this issue where some props they don't have like a like a side below the prop. And that's an issue when you're trying to microscope and say I want to make this into a counter like uh, this side or like I want to microscope this into another object and create something else I cannot do that if the side is not sewing there's an empty plane below but all props in Fortnite they have sides everywhere and they're very highly detailed and also interactable see and this is like the, the, the quality and polish of this game is uh, unreal, no pun intended. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's a passion for me. And uh, I'm just going to quickly show you something you can build, something really advanced. This is, for example, the hub that we discussed. It was all, this was all made in uh, just a couple of days. I built this in just uh, a week, essentially. I'm just going to show you a little secret project here. I'll show you how hot stacking works and like other more advanced things. But this is how a level will look once you've finished it. You go into the lobby, get the uh, details, you get like a waiting time. Uh, these are all settings that you can set. I'm, I'm just explaining everything here the player before they start this is a horror map by the way but i'm not going to sell too much horror <laughs> it's not you always have to make content that is uh, uh for kids essentially all right so we have we have to wait uh 50 seconds for this to start because i've said another start in this one yeah everything you see here is exactly it's made exactly with the same tools I just saw you. Like this is a table, this is the, the device I saw you, the billboard. This is another billboard with different settings, like the ceiling. And uh, once we start, I'm gonna show you uh, even more because this is a very basic room. Every, every uh, map has a name. Um, it shows uh, the person who made it on top, as you can see. And the little code you see on top is also the code uh, you can load into a feature portal to play it. So any any map you're gonna make and you're gonna publish, if somebody plays it, 
the code of the map is going to appear on top, like just like now, and the other people, a WhatsApp player, can also get the code and play it if they want. This is good for YouTube. All right, let's start. You probably can't hear any sound right now, but uh, I'm just mainly going to show you some core mechanics. So this is like a little trick you can do. You can set the game to be in first person by using specific props. As you can see, I have a button here that says start game. You're underwater as well. I'm teleporting the player into a blank room, black room, and I'm using the hot device, one after the other, to tell the story. Then I'm teleporting them into a room which I locked them into place. I cannot move now. Uh, just uh, some basic exploration, I guess. <laughs> Again, black room, because I'm trying to uh, do a change of scene. Uh, there's also music, but you cannot hear it. You can also build music, by the way. And then... Here we go. And you can also change the movement speed. Uh, this is a more detailed environment. This is a little bit more complex, but if you... The only reason this is more complex is because you need to do some prop research and find those props that fit into the same art style before doing anything. That's a core reason why you have to jam. You have to look into all the galleries, you have to place them, examine them, and then get something and create this memory in your head that um, will tell you, oh, this prop, this vase. I've seen this vase in Wild West, for example. I need to grab it from there. And then next time you need it, it's going to be there. And this is one thing that uh, separates an experienced creator from a basic creator. But you can you can develop this memory very fast if you're very passionate. Just keep on placing galleries and observing the props. Uh, I would say if you're super passionate in one month of like super, let's say, being dedicated to it, you can you can get into a very good level. Anyway, yeah. So I'm mainly telling a story right now. Uh, I can also add equipment to the player, like a flashlight. Is also I can also use uh, I can also create like a little map for the player. So now they got the flashlight. It says there, and a uh, little description as well. These are all things you can uh, do on your own as a creator. Like that's not something that Epic enforces on you. It's all on you. So uh, before the kitchen would be dark, and now that you have the flashlight, you can actually access it. So I'm just doing a little kitchen here, and then you can like uh, switch to first person mode again, like uh, create this uh, atmosphere, I guess. Yeah, this is like one example, and there's also multiplayer maps, because I'm mainly a solo uh, map maker, but um, there's probably other people that know a, a way more than multiplayer maps. But, for example, if I enter a future map, this is a multiplayer one, and this is another place. As you can see, there's a difference in like our style and style of its creator. I have no idea what I'm doing. So I haven't played this map before. Uh, okay, I can grab weapons, I see. Is it game to teleport? Oh, okay. Yeah, so this is a practice map for people that play in VR, for example. I have no idea what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm just... Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, it's, it's just... Every map has its own thing, and uh, depending on what you want to make, um, this is probably going to be something to appeal. Let's see this one. A crazy experiment. Okay. All right. I'm not sure what we're doing. It's a co-op map. I think it's a co-op map. Yeah. Huh? Oh, it's um, trappers versus runners. I create traps and the other player has to, uh, well, they have to cross another type of map. There's, there's tons, there's prop, prop hunt, uh, hide and seek, deathmatch, zone wars, 
after the flag. It's just so many game modes. Like, uh, you can even make your own game modes that nobody else has made. Like, uh, other other game modes are, for example, Search and Destroy, uh, Kill Confirm, even. It's just so many. So, yeah, that's um, that's for a creative in a nutshell. And sorry if I'm being so fast about things. It's just wanted to show as much as I want, uh, uh, as much as possible within the time frame that I was given. But yeah, um, I don't know. Hopefully, I inspired you people to uh, maybe make a tiny uh, effort to like try and see what Fortnite Creative is all about. Maybe make a little house, or I don't know maybe Flotilla something. <laughs> but yeah, it all started with uh, with a house for me as well. That was my first project, so yeah, just um, give it a try, see what you think, and uh, the rest is on you.